Is it looking drier for next week? For many, that's half term. And is it really turning colder for Halloween? We'll try and answer both of those questions in this week's Met Office 10 day trend. But actually, it's the shorter term that's been giving us meteorologists nightmares of late because there's more uncertainty than usual in the forecast for Friday and Saturday. Here's the reason why. High up in the sky, the jet stream is dipping to the south, way out in the Atlantic. This is called a trough. Now, this is bodily moving towards the UK and it generates areas of low pressure. But what's really happening is it's kind of dipping even further south and almost doubling back on itself. And when it squeezes together like that, and particularly when it doubles back on itself, we call that a disrupting trough. And it always provides more headaches for us meteorologists. Why so? Well, if we take a, a rewind and look at what's happening to the pressure pattern, it's this area of low pressure and these weather fronts in particular and how they interact with this disrupting trough uh, that causes the headaches for Friday and Saturday. And just when this area of low pressure will develop, how it develops and how quickly it moves. Now, this is the Met Office uh, model projections of the low pressure system for Friday from uh, midnight last night. But actually, this is way faster than most most of the other computer models are suggesting. And of course, sometimes it's not that useful just to look at one model. It's useful to look at many. And we also use something called ensembles, where we run the same model, but many, many times. And that's what this is showing. We call this a Dalmatian plot. Each one of these dots is representative of where that low pressure could be. And these are previous runs from the European model, and they're actually showing that over the past couple of runs in particular, there's been more clustering of the low pressure down to the southwest of the UK. You can see it more clearly here, these dots clustering down to the southwest. So the most likely scenario, instead of that low whizzing across the UK, is that it's sitting more down to the southwest between the Republic of Ireland and Cornwall, probably midday on Friday. So this is the most likely scenario now, generating a band of rain crossing the country on Friday that could be quite heavy in places as well. And then that low drifting its way slowly north and eastwards. Notice the isobars quite close together. That could generate some quite gusty winds uh, across the southwest in particular before that low kind of fizzles out as it crosses the country during Saturday. What does that mean for our weather? Well, it, crucially, it means if you've got plans on Saturday, you should keep up to date with the forecast because there is more uncertainty than usual. But generally speaking, Friday and Saturday, we'll be seeing bands of showery rain, particularly in western areas and the possibility of some gusty winds down to the southwest. Now, I'd love to tell you that the weather gets more straightforward after that, but actually it doesn't really. For Sunday and Monday in particular, there's still complications. And again, it's the bigger picture that tells us why. So that dip in the jet stream, that is clearing away, that trough. And the jet is now coming more in from the west, but it's being fed by a couple of different arms, if you like. And this little fella is... Uh, in particular, giving us even more headaches because that has the tropical remnants of Hurricane Oscar mixed into it. No longer a hurricane, but it does have that tropical air in it. And if we zoom in and run through the weekend, what happens is a bit of that warmer air gets pushed further ahead and generates its own little area of low pressure. So this is a weather system, little area of low, depending on exactly how it interacts with the jet stream, will uh, determine its track, but it's, it's still got some tropical air mixed in with it, so it's likely to bring a lot of moisture, a lot of cloud, and some outbreaks of rain coming in from the west on that more active jet stream through Sunday and into Monday. So what does that mean? Well, again, it looks like western areas will see the wettest weather for Sunday and Monday, and that's what's being backed up here by uh, the Met Office, European and GFS, the American computer model. These are the rainfall accumulations over Sunday and into Monday. And they're all highlighting that western areas, western Scotland, Wales, northwest England, the west of Northern Ireland will see the wettest conditions. The American model has the heaviest rain a little further south, again, depending on the exact trajectory of that low pressure system. But they're all also highlighting that eastern areas may well stay largely dry. So westerly winds bringing cloud and rain in from the west for uh, Sunday and Monday. Slightly counterintuitively, this is one of those 10-day trends where actually the longer range into next week, we have more confidence in the forecast than in the short to medium term because there's quite a strong signal that for next week, half term for many, this will be the pressure pattern, the dominant weather situation with high pressure sitting somewhere close 
to the United Kingdom. Now, high pressure means the air is sinking, so that would bring a lot of dry weather. Still quite breezy with the isobars closer together, closer to the low pressure systems to the far northwest. But um, in this weather scenario, which is most likely through the middle of next week, that would bring quite a lot of dry weather. Not necessarily sunny, it's likely to be quite cloudy and a bit dank and murky at times as well. But that is backed up by this graph, which is the multi-model probabilities, where we look at all of the computer models and run the ensembles and get percentages of the, the different flavors of weather, if you like. And the, the dominant one through next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in particular, is this mid-orange color, which is indicative of high pressure sitting close to the UK. So a pretty strong signal that that will be the dominant weather pattern. But that signal then diminishes as we go through uh, towards the back end of the week and into the weekend with uh, pretty much a more even distribution of the different weather flavors. But quite a strong signal there that through the middle of next week, high pressure will be close by to the UK. Now, Next Thursday is, of course, Halloween, and there has been some chatter that it's going to turn much colder. Uh, this horror show is the European postage stamps. Again, the ensemble weather forecasts where we run the computer model many, many times. 50 different postage stamps here, 50 different possible scenarios. The colors representing basically the warmth of the air with the yellows and the oranges milder and the greens and the blues colder. And you can just about make out, particularly if I zoom in, that most of them have the UK covered in the warmer air, uh, the yellows and the oranges. But there are a couple Member 23 here and member 11 that have the, the cooler air, certainly trying to push in across northern parts of the UK. But that's a couple of examples out of 50, so less than a 5% chance of that happening. And even if these were to come off, it would just indicate that it would be turning a bit colder across the north and there may be some snow on the Scottish hills, which isn't unusual for the end of October. So uh, no strong signals that uh, Halloween is at all going to be particularly cold. In fact, for most of next week, temperatures are around about average, generally speaking, with that high pressure close by, that would bring a lot of dry weather. Not necessarily sunny, often quite cloudy. And of course, this time of year with high pressure, light winds, that can bring stubborn mist and fog. Uh, there is an increasing chance, but still only a small chance of things turning a bit colder towards the back end of next week. If you have day-to-day -day weather dependent plans, then please do keep up to date with the latest forecast. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe.